Kaohsiung, a 40-year-old building, experienced a serious fire hazard, leaving 46 people dead. In Pingtong, a 91-year-old volunteer happily practices recycling every day. Welcome to Dai Headlines, I'm Hu Chao. Thank you for tuning in. In Kaohsiung, Xianchen District, 40-year-old Chen Zhongchen building caught on fire at 2 a.m. on October 14th, leaving 46 people dead. City volunteers quickly mobilized the team to set up a care station to provide assistance with hot food, drinking water, and supplies to the funeral home. Let's take a moment to pray for the people who lost their lives during the unfortunate accident. This man is very anxious because someone he knows is caught in a fire in this 12-story building. At 2 o'clock in the morning on 14th, a fire broke out in the Qianzhongchen building. Firefighters continued their rescue well into the day. More than 40 people have been sent to the hospital with Oka. The 40-year-old Chen Zhongchen building is all in appearance and now blackened by the fire. It looks like it's ruins, but it was once a glorious building. When the building was established in 1981, it also had a commercial talent, but now it's just a residential. Later, the building was neglected and there were many small fires. Unexpectedly, the accident happened again. Some people pay rent, but some people don't pay rent. You can enter and exit the building as you like. There's no one in charge. The public facilities of this building are disappeared. Most tenants are commercially disadvantaged people. Fire inspections were conducted in 2019, 2020, and even May 2021, or as recent as October 12th. But because it does not have an apartment building management committee, it is still in preparation. There's no one to regulate anything. After the fire broke out, city volunteers quickly mobilized care. The FF family member is a Ciji care recipient. They are our care recipients. The daughter kept crying that her parents didn't come out yet. We have known her since she was very young. She has grown up and graduated from university and is now working. After she confirms the status of her parents, we will come again to visit her. The Ciji Care Station is set up in a parking lot in front of a Chen Zhongchen building. The firefighters work very hard. We bought some hot coffee and drinking water. We're trying our best to provide them with hot food and to help replenish their physical strength. Thank you, Ciji brothers and sisters, for offering hot food and drinks to help us. Thank you very much. In addition to serving as a support system for the firefighters, Tsiji will also go to the shelters to care for the affected residents. We will also do follow-up continuous care. Volunteers will accompany the deceased on last part of the journey by chanting the Buddha Sutra so that the deceased and living can remain in peace. They also plan to enact care program for the survivors. Typhoon Haiyan brought Tsiji into Marikina City and inspired many volunteers. Recently, with the wave of the pandemic, the local volunteers were motivated to look for donations to help. Residents responded passionately to help Ciji purchase medical equipment and supplies. Sometimes we would walk past their front door, or they would call us inquiring about donating funds. It's not very common for residents to be inspired to give on their own. <laughs> Holding a donation box, the volunteers walk up and down the street without calling attention to their cause, as many residents are motivated on their own to donate money to help. Although the pandemic has made life difficult for most, there are still many kind-hearted people who can give a little to help someone else in need. 
during Typhoon Haiyan, Marikina City was a heavy disaster zone, and the neighborhood rebuilt and recovered thanks to everyone's help. This time, the obstacle will be met as a group with everyone working towards one goal. I've mostly met people who were very willing to donate. Some didn't even want to register their name and donated anonymously, as they received help before from strangers as well. The volunteers spent three days visiting five communities to canvas for donations to help Tsuji purchase medical supplies. We are happy that we have the ability to help others. Lending a hand is also helping oneself. In the face of the pandemic, we are all working together to get to the end. To be able to avoid intubation while contracting COVID-19 reduces a lot of pain for patients. In the Philippines, more and more hospitals require HFNC devices, requesting help from Tsuji. After some hospitals receive COVID prevention supplies and medical equipment, medical workers will record patients' usage of the devices and send the footage back to Tsuji. Covered and fully sealed with protective clothing, though it's very hot inside, medical workers remain happy because they can protect both themselves and patients. In our institution, we only cater... In our hospital, we only cater COVID-confirmed patients, and most of them suffer moderate to severe symptoms. They need oxygen therapy, and it's very urgent. These patients need therapy in our hospital. Besides having oxygen therapy, Dr. Jose N. Rodriguez Memorial Hospital also has eight HFNC devices donated by Tsuji as it can prevent patients from entering the intubation process. Devices are really important. When the HFNC devices arrived, we immediately put it to use because patients will need HFNC for treatment. When patients refuse to be intubated, they will need the HFNC device. Batangas Medical Center is the only COVID-19 dedicated hospital in Calabrazon. The director of the hospital requested help from Tsuji Philippines chapter. Uh, we really need as much as we can, as we have many patients. Mm -hmm. We're the only uh, DOH trained hospital in the whole Calabar zone. Wow. In, so mm -hmm. uh, all patients are coming to us. Caring about patient lives, and as the HFNC device is put into use, more people can be rescued from the disease. Promoting vegetarianism and raising funds for vaccinations, at Tsuji's Nehu Liaison office, for 10 days, people made vegetarian mawan, a traditional Taiwanese dumpling, hoping to bring everyone into doing good deeds and also adopt the vegetarian diet. Bingjiang Market is the largest produced market in Taipei City. It's cheaper to buy vegetables here in bigger quantities. Utilizing the smartness of a housewife, vegetable stall owners sold vegetables to Tsuji volunteers at retail price because they knew Tsuji will promote vegetarianism, gathering funds for vaccinations. We made our best dish, the vegetarian baowan, in order to bring vegetarianism to everyone. Today is the 10th day and we have made over 15,000 of them. From rolling the dough to the final product, volunteers have made everything, even including the vegetarian stuffing. Many people are happy after they ate the vegetarian baowan. Meanwhile, we are promoting vegetarianism. Because of the pandemic, it's ideal that people can buy our vegetarian meatballs and do good deeds. Today is a holiday and I wanted to be here. I was also happy while making the snack. Freshly made vegetarian meatballs are immediately sold out. And as citizens support the idea of an act to save animals, it is hoped that more and more people can adopt a fulfilling vegetarian diet. In Pingdong, there's a 91-year-old Zhuang Bufeng, Although she is illiterate, she reads the scriptures by listening to tapes to recognize words. As long as she encounters difficulties, Grandma Bu Feng will recite the Great Compassion Mantra to settle the hearts of the people. Even if Grandma Bu Feng is old, she still rides a bicycle to protect the environment every day, working eight hours a day. She has also been a vegetarian for more than half a century. 
Let's take a look at her story. Grandma Zhang Pufeng once took recycling vehicle to the bottom of the riverbed to collect recyclables. As a result, it was raining on a return trip, and the truck wheels got stuck in the pet hole and could not move. I've been calling Master, Master, my car is going to slide backwards. Please don't have anyone behind. I have memorized the Great Compassion Mantra. I'm chanting scriptures. She kept saying that Master Compassionate, and I kept saying that Guan Yin Bodhisattva is compassionate to help me. One person asks for one, read it together, I chanted the Great Compassion Mantra on the whole trip, and after she listened to it, her heart became more stable. Grandma Bu Feng was originally illiterate, so she learned to read by listening to tapes and memorizing scriptures. I went to buy cassette tapes in Taiwanese, and this book of scripture, and I let them teach me. After I have learned how to read, I don't have to listen to the tape. Early in the morning, she put on a reflective vest and she started doing recycling. Mm. She is very attentive. She is the person I have seen to be a good at recycling as a child on all age. Siji is great. Before, she often helped with cleaning in the temple. They said they want to hire me $15,000 a month to do recycling. I said no, if I made a month, I must spend it in a short period, and doing recycling is protect the earth. If there are not many recyclables, I will go out to collect them by bicycle. If there are not too many recyclables nearby, I use a cart to collect them. She has been a vegetarian for 55 years, taking care of her health. And the earth is responding to us. We accept the benefits of others, and we have to repay them the same. My husband also eats vegetarian food with me. Both of us are vegetarianism, which makes it easy to prepare food. If I have recyclables, I will also take them back to my mother for recycling. I also think that Suji's promotion of recycling is a good job. Regardless of age, Grandma Bu Feng aims to be a gardener of the earth. Every year from the first to the ninth day of the ninth lunar month, it is the Nine Emperor Gods Festival in Thailand. In previous years, city volunteers used this period to actively promote vegetarian food. This year, due to the pandemic, local religious activities have been suspended, and volunteers have also changed their way of promoting. Volunteers celebrated by making vegetarian meal boxes and sending them to major hospitals to comfort the frontline medical personnel for their hard work in fighting the pandemic. At the fascination station in Rechaberry province, Tsuji volunteers were invited to assist medical staff in fascinating and provide them with vegetarian lunches. The medical staff are very busy recently, and they don't even have time to go out for lunch. We have prepared nutritious vegetarian lunches hoping to give them full energy. In Thailand, most people will be vegetarian during the Nine Emperor Gods Festival. Due to the pandemic this year, volunteers changed the way of promoting vegetarianism by providing vegetarian lunches to medical staff in the hospital. The advantage of being a vegetarian is that everyone can kill fewer animals. In addition to expressing one's love, Vegetarian food is also an easy-to-digest food, which helps defecation and is good for health. I am very grateful to everyone for their encouragement to the medical staff. I responded that if I eat vegetarian food and not meat, I can avoid creating killing karma by myself. Vegetarian food is delicious and good for health. It's also for your own benefit. Fight the virus with a healthy diet, Purify our body and mind, 
at the same time do our best for the earth. The urine blessing ceremony is about to come. Volunteers from Banqiao District, New Taipei City, undertake the production of red envelopes in this year. It is estimated that 50,000 red envelopes will be assembled within one week. It seems like an impossible task to assemble 50,000 red envelopes of blessing and wisdom in four working days. But volunteers from Banqiao District have the courage to undertake it. Because this year's the design of the red envelope is without the commemorative coins or grains, so it will be faster to complete. Amid this pandemic, we also don't want many people to gather here, so we will be working in rotation. We expect to finish it in one week. Zhou Zhan Yan, who lives in Sanxia District, came early in the morning to seize every opportunity to give. Making red envelopes is once a year event, so I want to seize this chance to form affinities with domestic and foreign city volunteers. This is great to me, so I want to seize the time to do it wholeheartedly. Wu Guiyue is a seed volunteer. Over the past 10 years, she has not been absent from making red envelopes every year. She just hopes to form good affinities with Cixi volunteers in Taiwan and abroad. These red envelopes will be delivered to the hands of every Cixi people, hoping that they will be safe and auspicious, and this pandemic can be eliminated soon. Volunteers assembled every red envelope with great care, making this meticulous piece of blessings particularly meaningful. The Cixi basketball team celebrated its 27th anniversary through a special online event. The event allowed everyone the chance to share their kindness by donating to a special vaccine fund, which raised 300,000 US dollars. The Cixi basketball team not only uses basketball to make friends, but also does this. He not only taught me basketball skills, he also taught me how to be a man. Although some children have grown up, as long as we have activities, they will still come together just like a family. The 27th anniversary of the Zigi basketball team was changed to an online celebration, what remained unchanged is everyone's enthusiasm. I think the basketball team gave me a great feeling. That is, although I am busy with Cixi activities, because of this event, I can bring my family to participate. The Cixi basketball team has been around for 27 years. I believe it will have another 27 years. By playing basketball and contributing love, the vaccine fund has benefited and met their goal to help more people in need. Many people often express fear and hatred whenever they encounter a bug, immediately thinking of ways to clear them out. But according to a study in the United States, there are over 100 types of bugs that dwell in houses, and many are classified as pests. Think again, it's almost impossible to clear out the 100 types of bugs. A bug expert in Taiwan, Zhan Meiling, suggests that instead of being afraid of bugs, it's better to understand bug behavior in order to lower the damage done by pests. Don't just think you're the only resident in your house. These tiny guests are hiding in the corners where you can't see. Living in a house with an age of 40, 50 years, Ling Junyuan's family lives with many bugs. Termites will chew on furniture, the floor, wardrobe, closets, and even clothes inside the closet. They chewed up all my furniture at home. These uninvited guests hide in the corners of your home, living in your home for free while chewing on your chairs and clothes. I originally thought I accidentally tear my clothes, but I thought, why are there are so many holes in my clothes? Why are there so many holes in the clothes? Upon a closer look, case-bearing clothes moth are chewing on cloth. While this is cute to observe, it made many frustrated. And then you will find out that they are actually tiny, living creatures, and it is chewing your cloth. Zhan Meiling, a bug expert, has been studying bugs and is a well-known researcher. At her laboratory, we are able to find more answers. At the refrigerator inside the laboratory, there are many bug samples sent by people. People often ask, 
why are there so many frightening bugs at home, before answering, expert Zhen Meiling wants people to self-reflect first. At home, there are parts where it's connected to nature, and there's also food. There can also be tunnels such as windows, doors, and corners with gaps. A living environment with moderate temperature, an endless food supply, and a convenient tunnel, these three factors are why bugs are living in your house. This is when the adult bug comes out. Look at this. It is eating the churches and leftovers do. On the vegetarian jerky, bugs dug out many holes, and after zooming in, the holes host dead bug bodies and stool. This is caused by the cigarette beetle, as it often covers itself in stool, hiding in it while reproducing. I joked about that they are having a lot of pearls. The footage shown here makes many feel sick, yet it is gold in bugs' eyes. The box of chocolate was forgotten by owners after purchasing, therefore it is now a feasting ground for bugs. Ultimately, it is us that fed the bugs. So if we provided a lot of food, for example, I bought a lot of cereal, but I didn't seal the box well, there would then be a lot of bugs that eat cereal. Basically, bugs at home are caused by us humans since we raised them. The following example is quite surprising. Buckwheat pillows are often used by people due to the smell comparable to nature, yet it is actually a hotbed for bugs. Bugs can be found inside of pillows and cereal. This bug here is called the Lipsetlus bustritophilia, and it belongs to the family of Buglus. Using a microscope, microsized bugs can be discovered within the family of Buglaus. The Lipsetlus bustritophilia is a very infamous eater, as the large legs it has made it possible to move at a lightning speed. This type of bug relies on pathogenesis, and it eats almost everything. From molds, fungi, to cereal fodder, the presence of Lipsellus postricophilia can be seen everywhere. While fully grown, it reaches up to 0.1 centimeters. This bug is also an index for food security. This means that the food is getting moldy. Yes, don't eat it. In the past, we have also found transparent bud eggs inside Chinese medicine powder. According to a research in the United States, there are about 100 types of bugs at home, though expert Zhang Meiding believes that there are much more in Taiwan. I believe that there are more house bugs in Taiwan, since Taiwan has a humid environment. When bugs are seen, many experience fear and resort to eliminating bugs at home. But is this really a solution? We will never be living in a house without gaps, or any house without any food. So it is impossible to not find bugs. It is nearly impossible to remove bugs from the house. So what we can do is to clean our environment and watch out for expiring food. In the Dominican Republic, schools open up campuses starting in September. Yet it is hard for students living in poor regions to acquire school bags and stationaries. Upon noticing the needs, city volunteers distributed 174 sets of school bags and stationaries to students in need. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.